It basically says that the congestion on the internet is created by routers, and so that when, when a router gets overwhelmed or congested, it basically flaps and sends the data back and has to be resent again. The way in which the people tried to solve that problem, in one sense was logical. It said, let's send the data packets over the fewest number of routers, so there's less probability of congestion. The problem really is, is that the, it, it sends all the data over the same router. If you if you're, have a football game, it, it tends to, the first set of routers tend to get congested and overwhelmed because they're all going through the same shortest, shortest path. The, the difficulty is that when you look at the internet, it looks like if you ever see a picture of the solar system, th those are the routers. And then there's an infinite number, in addition to an inf in infinite number of stars, there's also an infinite number of links between those routers. So it's a very significant mathematical problem. It's considered mathematically uns unsolvable. When I looked at it, I thought, this is just a transportation problem. You know, AWS is a large, you know, uh, internet provider. They also ship, Amazon ships a lot of packages. Uh, Amazon uses uh, transportation optimization to determine how it sends those packages to, to your home. They don't use it when, in fact, you're looking at the internet because, the, you know, it was, you, you, you could, they didn't think you could calculate all those permutations uh, in, in any sort of, in, with all the computers on the earth, and it, it is really quite a challenging thing. So in order to basically apply transportation optimization, we actually had to know what was the capacity and the demand on every router on the internet and on every, every link. And how we solved that problem was, fairly, was a fairly simple hack with regard to it. Essentially, we said that over 99% of all that data is corrupted. So if you tried to actually use it in a model, it would give you a bad answer, even if you could calculate it. Uh, the reason it's bad, it, 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 the data is corrupted is that if you were to send a data stream at, say, 1080p, and it went through a 1080p, you don't really know what the uh, capacity of that router is. You know it will handle 1080p, but you don't know if it will ha handle anything higher than that. Same thing with a 720p, et cetera. So a lot of the routers, if you had a router that got 720p and it propagates 720p, you don't know its capacity. If it propagates 540, you know what its capacity is. It's only 540. That actually takes out most of the routers and most of the mathematics and most of the difficulty in actually doing that calculation. So it was interesting. We actually looked at it differently than where the industry looks at it. They would look at a net net capacity, which is the difference between capacity and demand. We broke that apart because, from a, a statistics perspective, you don't want to you don't want to calculate a difference, if you will. So we know. Fact, quite frankly, what the capacity of every router is. It's either on the nameplate or we can measure it. Then all we have to do is forecast demand. So we use basically supervised AI just as a, as a means of mechanically calculating the demand and the capacity. And then we basically apply transportation optimization to that.